Going from unstructured text to a structured output is one of the most popular use cases for LLMs. And oftentimes we want to use LLMs to generate complex schemas. So here's just a toy example of a semi-complicated pinetic model that we want to extract from some unstructured conversation. Now we can take an LLM and bind that schema as a tool. So this is a technique for extraction using tool calling. And what's nice is it can be used with any model provider that supports tool calling. And let's test this out by passing in this conversation and ask the model to extract the conversation into the schema that we define. That finishes quickly. We can very simply extract the tool call and test it to see if there's any validation errors. And we do see a validation error here. Now the problem is that complex or nested schemas are often difficult for models to extract directly via tool calling. So that's the motivation for this library called TrustCall, which was developed by Will here at Langchain. So you basically can import an extractor from TrustCall, pass in an LM just like we did before, as well as the same tools and tool choice to enforce the tool call, run it. We can rerun validation. We can see validation is now successful. So I'll talk a little bit about this library, why it works, and some of the clever things you can do with it. So producing structured output is a very common and popular use case as mentioned, but it has at least two problems, populating complex or nested schemas, as we just showed, but also updating existing schemas without information loss turns out to be quite a challenge. So you can think about three separate problems that you want to solve with respect to structured outputs. One is schema generation, so going from unstructured text to a structured schema. Another is schema updating, so having existing schema, adding information via unstructured text and updating it. And the third is a combination of the two, so generation and updating. So imagine we have an existing schema, unstructured text. We can update that schema and also generate a new one. Now part of the motivation for this, and where we've seen this play out quite a bit, is in memory. So if you use OpenAI, for example, you notice that it'll save memories. Sometimes it'll update existing memories. Someday, sometimes it'll create new memories. And that's exactly this third scenario we're talking about here. The ability to have a collection of things, could be memories, and given new information, make targeted updates to existing items, as well as create new ones, if appropriate. But in the context of maintaining memories. It's also the case that we often want to just simply update schemas and occasionally we want to generate an entirely new schema in isolation. So all three of these scenarios are fairly common when working with LLMs. So the central intuition behind this trust call library is the idea of a JSON patch. So that's just a very simple way to update, add, and delete items within a JSON structure, but importantly without replacing the entire document. That makes it cheaper. It also makes it less likely to have undesired deletions. Now let's see how this works in a few specific instances by walking through the code and looking at traces. We previously looked at this first example of schema generation. We showed that raw tool calling failed validation. We showed that trust call was able to successfully generate this schema, but I wanna show it happened a little bit under the hood. So right now I'm looking at the trace for trust call, which we ran. Now you can see initially, we only have our schema bound. This is the bound tool. It's called, as we expect. Here is the input conversation. Here is the attempted extraction into the schema. Now, what's neat about trust call is it'll internally attempt a validation of our schema. So you can see this validation is attempted and there are some errors. We can look at the full trace here. And this is where the magic comes in. So trust call has some built-in tools that allow for JSON patching. You can see right here, this patch function errors is called. Respond with all JSON patch operations required to update previous invalid function call. So you can see exactly what's happening right here. So basically it's looking at that trace and attempting to produce a JSON patch to resolve it. So very intuitive, attempt a validation and then perform JSON patching to fix the validation errors. So it performs the update and then performs additional validation, validations pass and we finish. So well, that's why with the raw tool call, we saw validation as shown here. With trust call, we very simply wrap a few useful things into this extractor. Initially, we attempt to perform the extraction with our schema, but we check for validation errors, just like we do here. We then look at the validation errors and use that to perform JSON patching to fix them. That process occurs iteratively within trust call and we get a successful output. So let's talk about updating schemas. Here's an initial schema for a user profile. And here is our initial user named Alex with some favorite shows, movies, books, and a bunch of hobbies and so forth. Here's our schema. We want to update the schema with information from a conversation between Alex and a friend. So here's our conversation. And the naive approach, of course, is just tool calling. So we're gonna go ahead and bind our schema to an LLM and we'll pass in that initial schema as user info, pass in the conversation and just say, update the schema based on the conversation using tool calling, that's it. So here's the result. Now we can very simply compare those two. 
Just pass them into our chat here. Let Claude analyze them. You'll see something kind of interesting. The show Mandalorian was included in our conversation, but it was not actually updated in the schema. We can confirm that quickly by looking at the schema and look at shows. And again, we don't see the Mandalorian added. We can look at the trace here and just dig into a little bit more what's happening. So again, we're just basically calling this user tool with this big prompt, which has the existing schema as well as the conversation. And we'll let the model attempt to one shot generate this new schema. And as mentioned, sometimes things can be missed. Like for example, we missed the show, The Mandalorian mentioned here, I'm into this new series, but it is not reflected anywhere else in the update. Now let's try trust call. Again, we're creating extractors like before, pass in our tool. And trust call allows for passing messages, just like we saw before. But also we can explicitly pass the existing schema with this existing keyword right here. In that case, we just pass in the user schema. We can run that. We can very quickly look at shows. And there we see the Mandalorian, which is the show that was missing previously. And again, we can do an analysis of this. We can see that we indeed remove Stranger Things just as expected, we added the Mandalorian. Because in conversation, Alex mentions loss of interest in Stranger Things and really enjoys the Mandalorian. So it's kind of cool, we can see here's the trust call trace. We can look what happens. It actually calls this patch doc tool. Now before we were actually calling the user schema tool and trying to update the schema in one shot. With patch doc, we're actually selectively applying patches to the existing schema to update new information. So you can see, here's our conversation passed explicitly. And here is the prompt that TrustCall uses to generate patches, generate JSON patches to update this thing schema. And what's pretty neat is it generates these patches to update very specific things in the schema, like remove certain hobbies, replace pets. Look at this, that is our update on the show Mandalorian. Very cool, and so forth. So that's really the difference. It's pretty intuitive. What's happening is instead of trying to one shot regenerate the entire schema based on the conversation, we actually use this patching tool to selectively update very specific parts of the schema that need to be changed. Now, it's also kind of neat is these two ideas can be combined together. So both generation and updating. So here's an example of a schema person where we actually have a list. So here's a list of people that we're tracking. Here's a conversation. Now, the only difference is we create our extractor, but we allow for this enable insert true. And just like before, we pass in our existing data. This is our existing schema and the conversation. And what's pretty neat is previously we had three people, Emma, Michael, and Sarah. And now based on conversation, we add a new profile, Olivia, with some information. So we basically created a new entry in our collection of schemas. And we've also updated the existing ones. And we can walk through all the various updates to each one. We can see a number of things have been unchanged as expected, added a few new points. And importantly, we added a new profile for Olivia. Now, if we roll back through, all I had to do for this particular case is just enable inserts. That allows us to create a trust call extractor where we can actually add new elements to our existing schema, as well as update existing entries. Alternatively, like we saw before with the user profile, we don't pass that enable inserts. In that case, we just update the provided existing schema in place based on any new information. In the first example, we again create a trust call extractor just like the other cases, but we didn't provide any existing schema. In this case, it will generate us a schema from scratch. So we just covered really the three main use cases for trust call, which is quite useful. So schema generation, particularly for cases of complex schemas, using built-in validation and patching. Schema updating, again, using patching as well as validation and combining the two together, as we saw in that third case. So we found this to be very useful, particularly for things like memory, where you want to maintain both things like a fixed user profile, as well as a collection of memories that you can both update in place and add to over time. So TrustCall is a very useful library, and it's actually been pretty popular lately. So we want to talk about it a little bit more depth and encourage you to try it out if you're working at all on structured outputs. So feel free to leave any questions below. Thanks.